24, 10 to 27, let's read responsibly. Verse 10, And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nahor. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. And let, and let it come to pass that the, that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast shewed kindness unto my master. And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her. And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him to drink. And she hasted and emptied her pitcher into the uh, uh, trough and ran again into the wall, into the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. And then the Lord to the Lord and, and it came to pass as the camels had done drinking, the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord altogether. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy. It's truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. Let us pray, Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. I have given uh, us another uh, time to study your word. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to be able to preach. And as we continue uh, um, going through this uh, uh, chapter in Genesis, I pray that you give us wisdom and uh, give us understanding as we look at the verses here and principles we can apply in our lives. I pray that you give each and every one uh, attentive mind, dear Lord, and a humble heart. Help me as I preach. You may the Holy Spirit work freely in our midst and that we'll be able to glorify you and the things that we're going to do today. For all these things, I pray in His name. Amen. Amen. So, thank you. You may be seated. So, um, uh, tag dito. Um, let's pray for a pastor that he'll be able to recover from his, uh, what, what he's feeling right now. So, he'll be able to uh, preach uh, to us again. Nevertheless, I thank the Lord for this opportunity to be able to continue um, uh, Genesis uh, chapter 24. And, um, and uh, thank you as well for, for the special number. Parang mensahe daw yan ni Deo sa aming mga lalaki, Pass Me Not. So that is, uh, that we have a new theme song, uh, Pass Me Not. Okay, <laughs> specific. Okay, so last week uh, we started uh, here in Genesis 24. And then we uh, uh, studied verses number 1 to 9. And we saw in the beginning of this chapter that Abraham had a very important, special mission that he entrusted to his most entrusted, uh, most trusted servant. He gave it to him. We also learned that all of us are servants of the Lord and we, are, uh, we all have a common calling and a common mission in this um, world, which is to share the Gospels to every creature. And the more faithfully we do that, the more the Lord will entrust us with things in this life. And we also saw 
that um, if we don't do it faithfully, it is also a possibility that the opportunity to serve the Lord will pass us by and then we'll not, we'll not be able to get it back. And we also saw that uh, uh, in the mission, whenever we have our mission, whenever we have things to do for the Lord, we will encounter difficulties and the, the devil will be the first one to offer us solutions for that. And the solution will always be to compromise. And we saw that the servant uh, asked um, um, Abraham for what seemingly uh, is going to be a compromise. And we saw that if we know our Bibles, we are not going to fall into the trap of the devil to compromise. Because the devil, when he offers a compromise, it will not look wrong. It will not look that it's wrong. Because if it is uh, outright just wrong, then nobody will fall for it. It is almost right. It looks almost right, but it is twisted. That's why uh, we need discernment to know the difference between what's right and what's almost right according to the Bible. If we don't know our Bibles, then it's very easy for us to fall into the compromise. We also saw last uh, week that it's very essential to know the most important things you have to know before starting the mission for the Lord. And um, I say this because... We don't want to go in blind. No, there are circumstances that we have to do that. But as long as God is giving us the opportunity to learn and to know the things we have to do, then we have to take the, that opportunity so that we're going to be ready for the mission. We're going to be ready for the work and that we're not going to uh, uh, destroy the ministry that God has, has given us. So today, we're going to continue this study um, uh, starting in verse 10. Hopefully, we'll go till verse 27. And if our pastor cannot... Uh, preach again tomorrow we'll, uh, we might be able to finish the, the whole chapter tomorrow and uh, before I start might I say that it's a wonderful thing to be called by God it's a wonderful thing to be called by God to do something in the ministry and though all of us have our calling common calling to do and to, uh, to, to preach the gospel to love one another to be a blessing to one another but there are things that you know that God has specifically called you to do like just for example the homeboys uh, uh, Pon Lu is the one who stopped studying in high school and then went on to uh, a full-time service and studying in, the, in our institute. It's, uh, um, I'm not, we're not saying that the other homeboys are not following the will of God, but maybe that is not God's leading in their lives. Or maybe uh, they're still not heeding that lead in, uh, that the leading of God in their lives. The point is all of us have different calling and you know what God would call you to do. I know by the grace of God that God had called me to preach and maybe someday lead a, a, a church uh, 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 for the glory of God. But it's a wonderful thing to, have, to know your calling because then you have a direction in life. You know where you have to go. And it's easier to make decisions based on the calling that God has for you. That means if there are things that is not according to that calling, it's easy to say no compared to not knowing what your calling is. If you don't know, then it's very hard to make decisions. But if you know that uh, this is my calling, I'm called to preach, and if, if something, uh, opportunity uh, comes in your way, and you know that it will uh, uh, maybe hinder you from doing your calling, it's easy to say no. But it's something that will help you or enhance you in, the, in, in, in what you're doing for the Lord. It's easy to, to grab on the opportunity and then... Um, be more effective for the Lord. This is why it's a wonderful thing to know the will of God in your life, to have that direction. And we see that in, in, in the Bible, in the book of Ephesians, that people who do not know the will of God, God, called it, God said that they are foolish. People who do not know the will of God in their lives are people walking in this life, living the, uh, the Christian life foolishly. They're like blind. They don't know where they're going. They don't know what to do. They are tossed to and fro. They, skip from, uh, they go from church to church, country to country, not knowing what God really has planned for their lives. And you have to praise the Lord if you know God's will for your life, then you are compared to being a wise man. Even wiser if you know the will of God and then obey the will of God. So uh, having said that, we'll, we'll pick up our Study here in verse number 10. The, ver the verse says, And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand. And he arose and went to Mesopotamia unto the city of Nahor. We see here that the servant didn't go empty-handed. He didn't go empty-handed. Abraham, we know, is a wealthy person. He's a, someone who has a lot of uh, 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 money, a lot of uh, uh, cattle, a lot of uh, possession. Though he's living in, a, uh, in, in that place, he is wealthy. And Abraham would not withhold these resources from his servant. 
he, he gave the mission to his servant, and the servant, the mission is very important, and Abraham would make sure that he has everything he needs in order to be placed in the position, to, uh, the best position for him to achieve the goal. Because imagine if this servant will go empty handed, no camels, no nothing. When he goes there, what will he do? When he arri arrives in the place, if he arrives without the camels, what will he do? And later on, we're going to see that the servant has everything, uh, all the mass, all Abraham has in his possession. The, the, the servant has power to use them as well. And later on in, in, in this chapter, you will see that he brought treasures for the dowry uh, to give to the brothers of Rebecca in order for them to allow Rebecca to come. So he's bringing camels. He's bringing men with him because nobody would be riding the camels if there are no men with him. And then he's bringing treasure. Imagine without all, those, all of those things. It's hard enough to convince someone, a stranger, to go with you to marry someone that she doesn't know. And it's even harder if you don't have anything to show for it, right? Even if he says that Isaac is rich, Abraham is rich, but he has nothing, nobody would believe him. And maybe they would even say he's crazy. And it would make that, uh, uh, the, uh, the work or the mission for him that much more difficult. And I'm not saying that without these resources, he will not be able to achieve his goals. Because had Abraham been a poor man, he, this servant would not have these things with him. But the Lord along the way will surely provide for him. Right? But since Abraham already is rich and already has these resources, then God has already provided. And then the Abraham is giving it to uh, this man. Now, um, the reason why I make this point, I want to, uh, the, the first point actually is there's provision for the mission. Right? There's provision for the mission that was given to the servant. And um, today there are churches with the mindset um, actually, I've witnessed a lot of churches like this, that everyone who goes out for mission is required to, has to suffer need. They have to start the mission with zero. They have to start the mission with nothing. They have to, to feel hunger. They have to, uh, 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 have, uh, to have the problem where they're going to find uh, food to provide for their family. And then some churches think that if you don't start the ministry that way, then you're doing it all wrong. No, um, that might be the case a few decades ago. You know, our, my, my father and uh, 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 um, the, the pastors that are uh, uh, his same age or maybe generation before him, they all started with nothing, like Pastor Porto. He, we, know, we know his story. He, 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 uh, whenever I hear him preach, he says these stories. Uh, Pastor Abante as well, he sa they all say this story. Same story. They go out, no money, no support. They, uh, they do the ministry faithfully, and then the Lord in wonderful ways provides for their needs. And we don't question that because the Lord will really provide for the needs of, his, of the people that He called. He will not let them die in hunger. Imagine if the Lord will call you to a mission place and then let you die in hunger. That is not a, going to be a good testimony. God will provide one way or another. But what churches don't uh, um, realize today is that God has already provided why? Because God has given resources to churches today. And churches today has uh, the ability to send out missionaries and then support them. God had provided already, but sometimes that provision is being hoarded by the wrong mindset of people. You know, just because you went out empty-handed and God provided for you in wonderful ways doesn't mean that everyone has to go through that process. And just because a person didn't go empty-handed doesn't mean he has less faith than people who went empty-handed. It's just that people today, we are so blessed that when we go, someone can support us, someone can help us, and then we're expected to be even more efficient. Why? We have the resources already. We have people supporting us, and then all these things. Maybe we're deprived of these wonderful experiences we hear from other preachers, right? You hear uh, uh, stories like, there are no more, there's no more uh, diaper for their baby or milk. And then someone will just knock on the door and give milk. And we know that's the working of the Lord. That's the hand of the Lord. Maybe today, if we, ha we, we don't go empty-handed, we don't experience that. And I, 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 I can only imagine what kind of wonderful experience that is, which the servant uh, uh, experienced. You see, a, a, a while ago in the red, he was praying. And before he even finished praying, the answer is already there. Right? That is the work of the Lord. And even though he has the resources, he still needs the, uh, extra, uh, the, uh, uh, the divine work of the Lord to provide for him. But we'll go there later. So, the Lord provides. When he calls you, he will provide. When he calls you, he will provide not only the resources, but the ability as well. 
Because, you know, Moses, uh, when he called Moses, he doesn't have that ability to really be a good speaker, to be convincing to the Pharaoh. So, so uh, uh, the Lord provided uh, for him, gave him someone to speak for him. The Lord will not let you go empty-handed and will not let you go without any ability to achieve uh, the mission that he has given you. Now, today, we're going to see uh, in this first point, I want to make uh, some sub-points here. How does God really provide? How does he provide? And there are different ways that he provides. He doesn't provide only in one way. If he provides for you in one way, he provides for other people some other ways. Now, let's go to Philippians chapter 4. And uh, let's start reading from verse uh, 14. Yes, 14 until 19. Notwithstanding, ye have done well done, that ye communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received Epaphroditus, the things which were sent from you, an order of um, sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Verse 19, But my God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. One way that God provides is He provides through the brethren. He provides through our brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, Paul Hill was writing this letter when he, when he was in prison. He was writing this letter and, of course, he's needing comfort. He's needing things, basic necessities. I'm sure that it's not a first-class accommodation in that prison. But then, we see here that in this whole chapter, of Philippians chapter 4, how the Lord uses the brethren or the people that Paul has been a blessing to to provide for his needs. And this is one way the Lord provides for us. For, uh, through our brethren. That's why as a brother or a sister, as a believer in this church, if God has blessed you, you need to keep your eyes open. You need to keep your eyes open for opportunities for you to be a blessing to brothers and sisters in need. Right? I, ex- I emphasize need. Right? We provide for the needs of the brethren and not for the things that they just want. Right? If, if you see a brother or a sister uh, being sad, depressed, because he doesn't have iPhone 11, you don't have to provide for that. That is not including, included in the needs. Now, but you see a brother or sister hungry for food. Uh, no place to stay. Uh, 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 maybe he, does, he doesn't have enough clothes to wear. Then that's the time that when God shows you that, he might be wanting to use you to provide for the needs of the brethren. Because he will not let it rain clothes today. He will not let it rain food. It's not going to happen now. God uses the brethren to provide for one another. And that is one way the Lord provides. That's why we have to keep our eyes open. Be always open for the Lord to use us to be a blessing to other people. Why? Because there is going to be a time that you're going to be in need as well. And you're going to expect your brothers and sisters in Christ who love you and love the Lord to be a blessing to you. What did James say in uh, chap- James chapter 2, verse 15 and 16? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye gave, give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? This should be our uh, uh, attitude. You don't just pray for them, but if it's in your power to be a blessing, to, to, to be a blessing uh, with the things that they need, we have to have the initiative to be the blessing to them. God is using you. God will not show you that need if He doesn't intend to use you to provide for them. And in return, when you're in need, God is going to use other people to provide for you as well. And this is what is expected of us, actually. Uh, a, a, a body of Christ, a church, it's expected for us to, to, to help one another with our basic needs. If there are members here who are wanting of food and shelter and clothing, basic necessities of life, then we are... F- failing as a church we are failing what kind of of of, uh uh testimony is it when one believer here in church will go to unbelievers and ask for these things when people know perfect know perfectly well that there are people here professionals with jobs uh with money and we can easily provide for these things but then they ask unbelievers to do that that is something that will destroy our testimony we're failing as a church if we don't show love to one another by providing for the needs again emphasizing the word needs and this is something that uh, we studied last week as well in Matthew chapter 7 verse 12 because Christ showed this principle to us 
Matthew 7, 12. Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, we know the context of this chapter, but let's apply this in uh, uh, being able of doing good to others or doing good to our fellow believers, being a blessing to them. We know... Um, this is the golden rule. We know that we call this the golden rule. And other philosophers, even before the time of Christ, have taught this to their disciples already. But Christ taught it differently. Other philosophers taught it in a negative way. If you don't want others to do to you, don't do it to them. In a negative way, passive way. Like, don't do bad things, bad things won't happen to you. But Christ put it up another level. Do good things. Good things uh, people will do good to you as well. So the principle in, uh, in, in brethren, uh, and the reason why it's important is the, the verse says in the last uh, part, for this is the law and the prophets. Now you want to fulfill the law that God gave to us. You want to fulfill uh, these things. You need to have love for the brethren. You need to have love for other people. Why? If you truly love, we truly love one another, we're not really going to do bad things to each other and we're going to do instead good things for each other. We have to go out of our way to do good things to other people. It's not, th this command is not passive. It is active obedience. It's actually doing something good so people will do good things to you. Now, the world says it in a different way. Don't do this so that people will not do this. It's easy to live your life without doing bad to other people. Just lock yourself in a room, right? But God expects you to make an effort to actually do something good. Because if we believe that this is passive or this is in a negative sense, we take it that, uh, in that way. If you remember the, uh, uh, the parable of the Good Samaritan, everyone who passed by that man uh, lying on the side of the road, they're not guilty. Right? Because they did not do anything. They didn't kick him. They didn't steal uh, whatever he has. They didn't they spit on him. So they're not guilty. They just passed by. But in the law of God, they're very guilty. Why? Because they saw something, they have to do something, and they did not do it. Right? So God, uh, Christ put it in another level and says, not only, don't, not only that you're not supposed to, uh, uh, to avoid doing bad, but you're supposed to go out of your way, do something good for others. This is what we have to do, especially inside the church. And if God provides through the brethren, you have to be willing and available for, for, uh, to be used by God to provide for the needs of others when you are blessed, when you are blessed by God. What did the Bible says? say in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 8, 1 to 5? We see here that you don't have to be rich or to have a lot of money to be able to uh, provide for the needs of others. Moreover, brethren, we do you with the grace of God bestowed on the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own self to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. You don't have to be very rich to be able to provide for others. What God has blessed you with, God will bless you with something that you can help others as well. Because these people in Macedonia are poor. They're in deep poverty, but in whatever power, whatever their power has or whatever they have, they were willing to be used by God to be a blessing to the church at Jerusalem. Though they're poor, though they're in deep poverty, and the verse actually says that if God will give them more, they're, much, they're willing to give it to Jerusalem as well. This should be the kind of uh, um, uh, attitude we have as believers. That's why... Paul is always having this thankful attitude towards the Philippian believers. Why? Because they're always ready, willing, and able to, to, uh, to provide for his needs. Not only does God provide uh, 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 for our needs through brethren, but also through our own hands. The, what did the Bible say in Acts 20, 33 to 34? Paul says, I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel, Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. So if you are placed in a position, God has called you, but no one is helping you. No brother or sister is uh, uh, going out of their way to provide for your needs. You have your own hands. You can work. You can provide for your own needs. This is actually the default. This is the norm. 
right? If, if, because sometimes when people go out and do their mission, they think they have this feeling of entitlement. Someone has to support me. Someone has to help me. But the norm is, if no one will help you, you have to provide for your own, own needs. You're expected to work. You're expected to use your hands. You're expected to do everything you can to provide for your needs, for the needs of your family, and eventually for the needs of the church as well. This is the norm. The, the, if other people are supporting you, that is an extra. That is a blessing that will free you up from working uh, 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 and then uh, focus more on the ministry. But if there's no one to do that, provide for your own needs. What did Paul say? He said that, you know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities. And we, we see even in the church at Corinth that even though he, uh, the Corinthian church can provide for him, he refused the help. What did uh, he say in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 8 and 9? I rob other churches, taking wages of them to do you service, talking to the Corinthian believers. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me, brethren, which came from Macedonia, supplied. And in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, and so will I keep myself. This is actually profitable when it comes to Apostle Paul, when it comes to this church which is, very, uh, which is carnal during this time. I will not take money from you. I will work for myself or ask money from other people so that uh, uh, the minist my ministry to you will not be hindered. And God expects us to provide for ourselves. The Bible says when someone is lazy, do not feed them. Right? They have to work. They have to do something. And if people will help you, then praise the Lord. If people will not help you, you still, God still gave you strength God still gave you hands, God still gave you feet, knowledge, wisdom in order for you to do something about it. This is what God expects from us. Not, that, not only does God provide through, the other, through brethren or through your own hands, but God also provides through extraordinary means. When you are placed in a position, no one's helping you and you cannot work uh, for yourself, God will provide anyway. Why? Because He's the one who called you. The point is, never doubt God's provision. In any way, He is going to do that. 1 Kings 17, 3 to 6. 6. Long lesson having on Friday. Deeper 6. 6. Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed th thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the book Cherith that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and, f and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. If you're placed in a position like Elijah, wala nang chance. No one's helping you. People are looking for your life. You have to hide. You can't work with your hands. God will provide anyway. God will provide anyway. He will do something in order to provide for your needs. That's why we have no reason to doubt the Lord. We have no reason to doubt the provision of the Lord. You're here today and you can testify that God has always provided for your needs. That God has always provided for whatever, especially when you are doing the will of God. Do not, you do not have to doubt uh, that provision. Remember when, when, when God called the Israelites out of Egypt, they, uh, they were provided with manna. They were provided with things that they need. Uh, uh, um, uh, fire at night when, when, whenever it's cold and then a pillar of cloud uh, whenever it is hot. God provides anyway. And if, there's, uh, and if you look around you and there's no way that you can provide for you and you think that it's impossible uh, for you to provide for yourself and your family, God will provide anyway. We only need to uh, have faith in Him. Now the Lord provided for the servant. God uh, blessed him uh, because he has a wealthy master and, and then the Lord has provided for him. So today, and, and uh, that's why we, know we don't need to worry. What, what did Matthew, uh, God say in Matthew chapter 6, right? Verse 25 to uh, 33, we know that if I provide, if I cloth the grass of the field, if I provide for the fowls of the air, how much more will I not, will I, uh, will I not provide for your needs? And actually, God said, do not worry. Don't worry. Why? If I provide for all these things that, 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 that we burn anyway, that is not even the crown of my creation, how much more will I not provide for you? My children whom I love, my children whom I save, the Lord will provide for us. That's why it's almost or it is a sin to worry and to doubt the, prov the providing power of God. Right, because there are many ways God can provide, and we have to just uh, look for that provision uh, uh, from the Lord. So the Lord gave provision to the servant, and if you are called by God, 
be sure and trust that the Lord will provide for your need, whatever He has called you to do. Now, here in uh, uh, verse number 11, the Bible says, And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. Now, note here that before I go to the second point, the servant did this because they're not actually allowed to get water from the well of other places un until the people in that place have finished taking the water that they need and then they're, they're, they can do that. So that's why he was kneeling there and waiting. Now, Second point here in verse number 12 to 14 says here, And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and shew kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city uh, come out to draw water. And let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. Second point here is, when you're uncertain, you pray. When you're uncertain along the way, you face a situation, you're not sure what to do, do, stop what you're doing and pray to the Lord. Ask wisdom from the Lord. Now, I made a point last week that when God has called you to do something, that, all you can, uh, that, you, that you have to do all you can to search the Scripture and be sure to know what you have to know in order to fulfill that, uh, the mission. But it's also a reality that there comes a time when you're doing the mission for the Lord, the calling of the Lord, there will be times when you do not know what to do. Like when you feel like, I cannot find this situation in the Bible. I don't know what to do. Like the servant, Abraham didn't t uh, uh, give him uh, every detail of what he's going to do. Now, he's outside uh, the city. He's outside there. All right, I'm here, Lord. Now what? There are hundreds of women here. Which one? And who am I going to choose? Now, if he's just going to, to, to do his own way, okay, I'm going to look for the most beautiful one. That must be it. Or I'm going to look for the richest girl. Or maybe I'm going to look for the strongest. Or maybe I'm going to look for the girl with the, uh, with the uh, best family. Or maybe the most famous girl here. Now, when you're facing this situation, when you don't know what to do, it's not a time for you to, go in, uh, to use your own wisdom and, and, do, and, and, and do things for you in your own power. That is not the time to do that. When, you're, when you hit a hurdle and there's something in front of you, ask wisdom from the Lord first. Hindi po dapat yung default na, ah, malit na bagay lang yan, kaya ko na yan. Yung you say, ah, this is just small matter. I don't need to ask God. I'll do it. I'll do it by myself. You know, that small matter will be the end of you. Why? Because there's no such thing as a very small matter in the ministry of the Lord. You still have to have the wisdom of the Lord, even in these small things. So the servant, instead of saying, all right, women are coming. What should I do? Which one, Lord? Now, imagine that women, a lot of women are coming. Uh, he, should he just choose anyone? Or does he believe that God has already provided that woman and he just needs to find it in the eyes of faith? Now, he knows and he prayed to the Lord. Why? Because if we lack wisdom and we lack these things in, in our ministry, all we have to do is to pray for the Lord and the Lord will guide us. Uh, um, what, what did the Bible says in James 1.5? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not and it shall be given him. So when faced with situa in a situation that you don't know what to do, it's not time for you to Google it. It's not time for you to find the solution in YouTube, it's time for you to get on your knees and pray for wisdom to the Lord. There are things that are difficult, especially in foreign ministry, foreign mission, foreign field, that you will not really know what to do. Right? Lord, I'm used to uh, 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 approaching someone, opening the Bible, and them right there and there, they are going to understand what I'm saying. Why? Because they believe the Bible. But wh what am I going to do here? They don't even believe the Bible. They don't even believe that God is the Creator God. They don't even believe that there is one God. What am I going to do? Now, what are you, uh, now you will be tempted to think, to, to, to do your own devices. Okay, a uh, concert. Okay, uh, uh, free this, free that. Uh, give them this, give them that. Lead them to a prayer. And then trust that God had already saved them. That is your own wisdom. That is your earthly wisdom. You should uh, 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 ask for heavenly wisdom from the Lord. It's foolishness to do the ministry of the Lord and then use worldly wisdom. It doesn't work that way. It's the ministry of God. It is heavenly work. The worldly wisdom will not work with this kind of thing. That's why even if you see that 
you don't know what to do, if you pray to the Lord, depend on Him, then you're going to be confident with the decision that you're going to make. Now, what did, the, with, what did the, this guy pray about? He prayed that the Lord will show, her, show him uh, 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 the woman. Now, he might have a checklist here, right? The woman who will this, who will do that, who will do this, who will do that. But then, there comes a time when you just have to throw that list away. Right? Like, I'm, I'm speaking to the single people here. Right? Um, you have your list. Uh, has to be... Um, uh, and again, in the, in the list of the, of the servant here, walang included dito na itsura. He didn't say that, oh, the beautiful woman. Right? His list was a woman who's courteous, uh, 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 respectful, helpful, right? You just see the description. Uh, a woman who, who will willingly get water for me, let me drink, and even draw water for the camels. Now imagine, I searched uh, last night, uh, how heavy is this picture that she's uh, uh, carrying? It's five gallons of water, almost 20 kilos. A single woman during that time. They go out to the well. Uh, the, the, the Bible says that they go down there and then they come up. So she, imagine she went down carrying 20 kilos of water and then saw the servant, gave him to drink, and he said, okay, I'm going to get for your camels as well. Ten camels. How much water are they going to drink? How long did it take for her to finish drawing water, going back, drawing water, going back, so that the fa- camels will be filled? So the servant is looking for a woman who's courteous, diligent, hindi tamad. Diba? Ito yung hinahanap niya. Ganitong klaseng babae yung hinahanap niya. Walang itsura. He didn't say na should be beautiful, should be tall, should be white. Right? There comes a time, I- I- review nyo yung mga checklist nyo mamaya pag uwi nyo. Mas nauna po yung looks. Now, especially when you're younger. The looks come first, but then the character comes last. But then when you get older and older, then medyo bumabalik tayo yung list. Gawa ganon. Character na yung inahalap natin. You know, sometimes, tapo na lang natin yung just let the Lord lead you. Right? Just be busy in doing, just like Rebecca, busy in doing what you're supposed to do in the work of the Lord and the right man will find you. You don't have to look at Now, sino po sa mga nag-asawa na dito that you can tell me that the person you married ticked everything on your list? Na lahat ng checklist mo nun, sh- perfect, 100%, siya yun. Na wala naman. Minsan talag- talaga hindi mo makikita yun. Di ba? Maganda at pogi pa lang. Eh. Wala na, di ba? O, oh, matangkad. Wala na. So kung magbe-base ka sa list mo, hindi ka makakahanap. Single ka na lang forever, kapatid. Kaya ka, na, don't rely on that. Rely on what the Lord had called you to do. Pray for wisdom. Uh, as for that, now we, we uh, got off the rails here. Oh, wisdom. Now this person prayed to the Lord. Now if any of you, you lack wisdom, let him ask of God and give it to all men liberally. And uh, pray that not, and it shall be given him. Now, uh, the, the, even though the, the, uh, the servant here prayed for something very specific, a very specific scenario, we should not do that today. Right? Lord, sino pong papasok dyan, madada pa, tas ako ang unang titignan niyan po yung papangasawa ko. We should not challenge the Lord to do that. Baka patulang ka ng Diyos, magbago isip mo. Pag, pag ganun, tanggalin yung dalawang ipin. Ay, Lord, Lord, bago po isip. Change, change po. Ay, we should, now, that's why when you study the Old Testament, you need to exercise wisdom as well. Because if you don't do that, then, bah, pwede pa lang magpray ng ganyan. Exactong situation. Now, there may be time that God uh, gives you sign. There may be times that when you pray, you wait for the Lord to do something, and that's the sign that you make your decision. But we should not pray this way because we already have the Bible. They don't have the Bible. We have the Bible, right? So when we pray, we will know if God answered the prayer if it's not against His Bible, against His Word. So that is our, during our time today. But the, but the principle we're taking here is the, the servant relied upon the Lord. And when you rely upon the Lord, you will realize that the Lord really answers your prayer. That the Lord really answers in prayer in ways that you can't even imagine. Uh, what, what, what is the answer of the, uh, uh, the Lord here in verse number uh, 15? And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, bago pa siya matapos, that God had already provided, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair. Bonus na lang yung maganda. Hindi niya hiningi na sana maganda, pero maganda si Rebekah. Wala tayong magagawa. Yun ang bigyan ng panon. Pagtsagahan na natin yung maganda. Diba? Eh, yun ang binigay eh. Hindi ko naman pinagprayan. 
Pero yun ang binigay sa kanya. So, she was fair to look upon. Uh, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. And the servant ran to meet her and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. And she said, and she said, Drink, my lord. And she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand and gave him drink. And when he had done drinking, he said, I will draw water for the camels also. Exactly how he prayed for it. Lord, sana ganito yung gagawin niya. And that's exactly what Rebecca did. The Lord answered, ex uh, 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 gave him the answer for exactly for what he's praying and gave him a bonus as well. Now, the Lord, the reason why we have to pray, the reason why we have to ask wisdom for the Lord, simply because he promised that he answers our prayer according to his will. And if that's not enough reason for you to pray, I don't know what is. Right? If the Lord already said, ask, it shall be given you. As long as it's in my will, I will answer your prayer. Now, God answers prayers in the ways that we cannot even imagine. Now, we can say, hey, the servant, uh, para bang, nilimitahan niya yung pagsagot ng Panginoon. No, the Lord answered it that way. The Lord can answer it in a different way. The Lord will answer it according to His will. Right? Remember when Peter was praying, or when the church was praying for Peter, for him to get out of prison because he's about to be killed the next day? I'm sure that, the, uh, uh, that these people did not pray for the way the Lord answered their prayer. Why? Because when, when, uh, when uh, uh, Peter knocked on the door and then the woman, uh, Rhoda, answered uh, 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 the door, they cannot even believe that Peter was there. Why? Because they cannot imagine that the Lord will actually answer their prayers in that way. They couldn't believe it. Why? This way we don't have to uh, uh, limit the way the Lord answers. And, mo uh, and most of the time, when God answers prayers, it's beyond what we imagine. Uh, what, did, what did the Bible say in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20? Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly uh, above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You have Christ in you. You have the Holy Spirit. You're doing His will. You're faithfully doing the work of God. You ask for wisdom. God is faithful to give you that wisdom so that you will have the uh, um, uh, 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 confidence to make the decision. You know, you notice this. There's, uh, I, I'm sure that all of us have uh, 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 been in a situation in our life when we're not prayerful and then a situation in our life when we are prayerful. You see the difference. Big difference. When you're not praying, you are uh, praning. Right? You don't know what to do. You will not be confident in any decision you make. Why? Because you didn't ask God for wisdom. But when you, God, you ask God for wisdom, you're confident in the decision that you're going to make. Because God will give you that peace. That is the answer of God. So, when you're not sure, like this guy, I'm sure that if he didn't pray, Rebecca would still be there, but maybe he would not know that's the girl. He would not know why. No wisdom. Then ask for God. But that's the difference. Nagpray ka, wala kang confidence na gawin ng isang bagay. Ay, pag hindi ka nagpray, wala kang confidence gawin ng isang bagay. Nagpray ka, meron kang confidence because you know God answered that prayer. And it's something that uh, you can testify sa buhay mo when, uh, when, when God answered your prayer. Now, notice in verse 21 here that the servant still exercised caution and the man wondering at her held his peace. We don't know how long this happened. Uh, igib, igib. Pero tumahimik lang siya. Pinagmasdan niya lang si Rebecca. Kasi he may be uh, 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 amazed by the answer of the Lord. Pero what he was thinking of, to wit, whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. Is this really the answer of God? That's his thinking. Kahit na sakto na sa prayer niya, he's still exercising caution. Why? Because realize the devil can answer your prayer too. The devil can answer your prayer too. If you're praying for something, the devil knows something that you really need, you really want, and the devil can answer that prayer, especially if you pray out loud. Now, he cannot read our minds. You pray out loud, he knows what you need. He's been doing this longer than we've been alive. He can answer your prayer. And you have to exercise wisdom to know whether this is from God or not from God. This is where discernment comes from. Now, you need a job, the devil will offer you a job. But no, is that, is that the devil offering or is that God offering? If the devil is offering, I'm sure it is against the will of God. It is against the word of God. It is against the ministry that God has given you. Exercise that caution. Exercise that uh, uh, discernment. So the, instead of, oh, ito na yun. Sakto yung sinabi niya. Yan yung pinagpray ko. Oh, ikaw na yun. Papakasalan mo si Isaac. Sinagot ng Panginoon ang, pang ang panalain ko. No, he stood there thinking, did God really answer my prayer? Now, we don't know how long that is. It may be 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, but he was just there thinking. 
Is this God's answer? Now, when God gave him peace, and, and uh, 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 gave him peace, he said in verse number 22, And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of uh, half a shekel weight and two bracelets for, uh, for her hands, of ten shekels weight of gold. And, he, and, she, and said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house? Now, he's already sure. This is the Lord's answer. And then I'm, go, I'm going to take it. Uh, uh, verse number 24. And uh, she said unto him, I'm the daughter of Bethuel, the son of Milcah, which she bare unto Nahor. She said, Moreover unto him, We have uh, both straw and provender enough and room to lodge in. When, when the Lord answers the prayer, Sunud sunud na yung may kita mo na yung Yung, 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 uh, yung pagkilos ng Panginoon. So he said, okay, this is the Lord's answer, I'm sure. I prayed for you, this is the Lord's answer. So bring me to your place. Bring me to your house. Because I have a mission and I'm going to do my mission. Now, third point here, and uh, uh, maybe our last point today. When the Lord answers your prayer, and you, when you, and you, you, you hit a hurdle, you don't know what to do, you pray to the Lord, the Lord answers your prayer, and you're able to go through that hurdle. Point number three, remember it's not you. Remember it's not you. What did he say in verse 26 and 27? And the man bowed down his head and worshipped the Lord. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth. I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. It's not him who made all of this possible. Why? Because this is an impossible mission to begin with. Dun palang kay Abraham, impossible na. Pero God provided, God gave him wisdom, God uh, pinlancha na ng Panginoon ang kanyang dadaanin. Why? Because he was willing and was available to obey the will of God. Right? It is, remember, it's not you. Pwede niya sabihin, ganda kasi nung checklist ko eh. Naghanap ako ng masipag. Naghanap ako ng uh, 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 respectful. Naghanap ako ng ganito, ganyan. Tama yung checklist ko. Masasaya, sasaya si Isaac. Papasalamatan ako ni Isaac. He remembered it's not me. Kakapray ko nga lang. Sakto yung binigay ng Panginoon. He worshiped the Lord. You know, when you are in a ministry and the Lord bless you with success, whether it be numbers uh, or whatever success in the ministry you experience, you have to be quick to remember that it's not you. Now, whenever God gave answer to your prayer, whenever God gives you wisdom to go over that hurdle, minsan na gagawin natin, nauna pa natin i-post sa Facebook. Nauna pa natin ipagkalat. Nauna pa natin i-preach. Nauna pa natin ganito lahat. Ang gawin natin, sit down and pray, worship the Lord, thank the Lord for that. Why? Because it's never you. Kasi kung ikaw lang din, walang kwenta sigurado yung ginawa mo. Kung ikaw lang din, sigurado walang katuturan yung ginawa mo. Walang patutunguhan. But when it's the Lord who answered your prayer, it is success that came from God. Success that will be sustainable. Success that will glorify Him. Success that will earn you reward in heaven. And you have to pray to Him and worship Him. Kasi bakit? Reward na nawala pa. Pera na naging bato pa. Why? Because you forgot to give credit where credit is due. Right? He said, Lord, thank you. Thank you. This is your working. I worship you. And uh, look here, that a person who is willing and able, who is able and willing and available to follow the will of God, the Lord will guide you each step of the way. Nabasa natin yan sa Bible throughout, uh, throughout the Bible. This servant, Abraham, right? Uh, the Lord said, go into a place where you do not know. Just keep walking. But the Lord guided him each step of the way. Paul, throughout his missionary journeys, he never knew what to do next. But the Lord guided him each step of the way. Why? The key is, are you available? Or are you willing to follow the will of God? Why? If you are, He will provide and He will guide you each step of the way. What did the Bible say here in uh, verse number uh, 27? I being in the way the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren he will not be in this position had he not been willing to obey in the first place but God, but he put himself in a position that God will show himself mighty that God will show himself capable that God will show himself as a loving and a God who will guide his step away because he placed himself there he obeyed Ayan po yung uh, responsibility of man and sovereignty of God why? Kasi hindi naman magagawa ng Diyos, hindi naman gagawin ng Diyos itong wonderful work na ito kung hindi siya pumunta doon. I'm sure he could have took the camels, the servants, the riches, and then went on his way. Meron na siyang pera. Right? And then the Lord will find another way to bring Rebecca to Isaac. Because he can never thwart the plan of God. That's the plan of God. But he was willing and able, so God uh, uh, showed himself sovereign in his life. 
Kaya hindi po yan, hindi po yan opposite. Hindi natin sinasabi na pag may responsibility ang man, hindi na sovereign ng Diyos. Pag sovereign ng Diyos, hindi na responsible ang tao. Tao lang ang gumagawa ng ganong klaseng contradiction. But it is something that is taught in the Bible, the responsibility of man and the sovereignty of God. You will realize God is sovereign when you obey. And even if you don't obey, you realize that God is still sovereign. Why? Sigurado si Rebecca, papakasalan niya pa rin si Isaac. I don't care how. Now, God may, maybe kung wala na talaga, 